So, welcome back. A little bit different intro. Normally I'm in my car, but right now I'm here with Miss Renita. Mm -hmm. The most beautiful mare. The most beautiful mare. Yeah. So, we're gonna jump today. And I, <laughs> we're gonna jump today. <laughs> She's like, oh, thank God. I hate dressage. Um, so, we're gonna jump today. And I am going to jump her in a hackmore. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in a hackmore. I'm gonna see how it goes. Last time I did it, she was not a fan, but I think I'm gonna switch um, the actual hackmore. Thank you. I'm gonna switch the actual, actual hackmore and um, try a different one. So we'll see what she thinks about that. Hopefully I don't die. liniment on on her hocks and her stifles and her knees if I'm going to jump um, and then I put this on underneath the saddle uh, just so that way it can kind of loosen up her back because she can be a little bit cold backed um, but that way I think it helps I think it helps a little bit so I just spray it on and it's like a long spray so I spray that on and I just kind of rub it in a little bit so then down on her legs, is spray a little bit on her legs, and I don't rub that in. I'll spray a little on her hocks. And then up on her stifles. And then obviously on the side of her back. I let that soak in while I pick her feet and put her boots on. So, I just mom and a rub. I didn't really do much this day. Um, I took her just maybe over a couple fences. And she went pretty well on the flat in the Hackamore for the most part. I liked how she was quiet and just kind of relaxed a little bit. However... She's always usually really good at the beginning of the ride, and then she starts getting nuts. So <laughs> she went pretty well in it. So I may start flatting her in the Hackamore. And 
jumping in either the hack a bit or the um one of the snaffles that I use and obviously I am filming or I'm re- recording this voiceover like really really late because this was when we were still at Avalon and I've been at um the new barn for a little over a month so this was probably back in July so I had all the footage so I at least wanted to edit and put it up for you guys because I had all of it and obviously I think you'd like to see it but yeah this is like way late I'm filming this after we did the um mini event so it's September 21st right now and this was definitely like the middle to end of July so it's been a hot minute um so we're just you know doing our thing doing a flatten um she started to stretch and she's offering more stretching as we go which i'm really happy about and we're gonna kind of focus on that in our flat rides versus doing anything else um just really trying to get her to stretch down and loosen up her back and just kind of release some tension because she tends to carry a whole lot of tension in the dressage ring and it's always our worst score in competitions and she just something about the dressage ring and her brain just doesn't click she just either absolutely hates it or I don't know, maybe she had some bad experiences. I have no idea. But she's literally got the talent to be a Grand Prix dressage horse if she wanted to. But she is just, she just hates it. But you can see there, she started to get um, a little goey, half halted her a little bit. And she was like, ugh, the hackamore. And it's funny because it's more so the pressure, like the nose action that she doesn't like. Um, so in the hack a bit, she's popping up because of the hack more action, not actually the bit action, because when I ride her in a snaffle, she doesn't pop up, but she's just like super strong and hard to stop. So I still don't think we've quite found her bit yet. Um, and I think there's probably something better out there, but, uh, right now, I've just got her going in a snaffle on the flat and then we went back to the hack of it because she's been feral lately. <laughs> so, which you guys will see in another video when I uh, post one of my lessons, one of my recent lessons with Paula. But I do like how backed off she is in the hackamore, but I just don't like the constant popping up. Um, it's kind of painful for my back to be honest so I just wanted to try her in it again and then also kind of give you guys a different view of, of what she's like um, you know it's hard to tell what a horse is like just from a couple videos um, and short of being there watching us every day or being my trainer or actually riding her it's a really hard to get a good idea of her and she just um She's a tough mare, you know, she's, she's come a long way and she's getting better and I'm learning to ride her better, but it just, it takes time. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with how she did, but as you can see, she just, she really does not like the hackamore very much. <laughs> she just is like, Ugh. but it honestly, it backs her off the most out of anything. So like I said, we're just still looking for you know what what's right for her and just sort of buying a bunch of bits and trying them it's you know we'll, f we'll find something we'll find something that she likes and i like so yeah rain No, Mare. No. Come on. <laughs> She's so cute. You did a good girl. You did a good girl. You guys wouldn't have met her yet. This is Miss Raina. Jockey club name is Laura Ray. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, she is Kinsey's mare. So you've obviously seen Kinsey probably. This is Ten's half sister, so they have the same sire, uh, Temple City. They are very similar. She is just, she's a little bit shorter, a um, little bit more compact, shorter neck. Um, she's confirmationally quite a bit different, but they are both high Kinsey. Uh, they're both very similar personality wise. He's just a little bit more extra than she is, which is kind of funny because she's a mare and he is not. So I am. Oh yeah. No, no. Get me. These are amazing. Amazing. No, you don't need that. So this is my ride on Raina. She's such a good girl. Um, she really tries hard. She doesn't, I mean, she's, she's just a good mare. Um, most of what I work on is walk to halt, just trying to get her to halt and then walk forward without pulling with her front end, which takes a long time for them to develop those hind end muscles. I mean, I've been working on it with Ten for over a year and he's still has a hard time sometimes, but, um, I had her for a month and I had her while Kinsey was out, um, on training for the military. So she dropped her off and then I had her in training, um, just to kind of work on balance, work on flat work, work on strengthening her hind end and, um, really just get her, get her going. She, um, is kind of lazy but at the same time does have a motor. So that's pretty similar to how 10 is. And she can be kind of feisty sometimes, but nothing anywhere comparable to um, Mr. Dramatic um, 10. But worked on a lot of walk work, a lot of trot work. And here I'm just trying to get her um, to leg yield from the right um, to the kind of the quarter line and then leg yield back to the wall so she was so good this was probably one of our one of our better rides and she's really starting to um understand the concept of working over her top line um she's not strong enough to hold it but really trying to get that lateral work that leg yield confirmed and just getting her loosened up and moving um so you can see anytime she um, relaxes into the contact and into the bit, I pat her and give her a little bit of a release. Um, it's all about the pressure and release with them. You know, you don't, it's, it's about the timing. You don't want to hang on. You don't want to be in their face when they start reaching for the bit. Give them a pat. Tell them they're so good. Um, most horses really, really love positive reinforcement. Um, I kind of do a mixture of both and they just, they, they, they really like to know that they do a good job and she's, she's doing a good job. So this was her right lead canner and um, this one was where they said that she was strongest, but I actually found her to be stronger on her left lead. <laughs> oh, look at how pretty she is. She kind of. If you've been around for Theo, when I had Theo, um, she kind of reminds me a mixture of Ten and Theo, if that makes sense. So she's super quiet and um, very amateur friendly and super calm for the most part. Um, her jump kind of reminds me of Theo too. They just, they have a lot of similarities and then she also has a lot of similarities to 10. So she kind of reminds me of a mixture of the two, which is super fantastic because that's like a dream horse, the mixture between the two of them. So I think she's going to have a really bright future and she's definitely going to be an upper level potential horse. Um, so she's going to be able to take Kinsey really, really far. So I'm just happy that we get to be in the process with them and I can help both of them get confidence and now that we're at the same barn, I still continue to ride her. So that's really, really exciting. So like I said, this video is two months old, but um, you'll see her 
more coming up in the next the next few videos um so we went over just a couple jumps she ended on this one and it was so beautiful and then we ended with um starting to work on that little stretchy trot again with her i try to get her to stretch in between movements so like we'll do something and then i'll let her stretch and then we'll do something else and i'll let her stretch so she's really 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 come super far so i'm really happy happy to have her are you a good girl she was good you were a good girl i'm really happy with how she did i went over a couple fences i didn't really do too much with her today um, her workouts really cannot be that long because I'm asking a lot more of her than she is normally used to be being asked for. So she gets a lot more tired a lot quicker. She is a little out of shape. Um, but that's not a problem. I mean, for me, my rides on her last maybe like 20 minutes or so. I really don't, really don't do a whole lot with her. It's more so what I've been working on is just getting her um, to get sent more sensitive off the leg because she is pretty dead to your leg, especially the left leg. The right leg, not so much, but um, she was brought to me with being told that she was um, really bad on her left, which it actually is worse on her right um, because what what I found is that she really likes to throw her rib cage out to the left and that makes sense because she's not listening to the left leg as much and I think that's because that left hind is a little bit weaker than the right so it's a little bit harder for her to push off um, but it would definitely make sense when they're like oh she dives going to the left because if she's more sensitive to the right leg um, and not as sensitive to the left leg she's just going to listen to that right leg and that's almost going to make it worse by the person riding her if they're not aware of it that she's going to dive because she's not listening to the inside leg but then more so listening to the outside leg so what i have been working on is introducing leg yields and just really getting her to push off with that inside hind leg um, and we've been working on 10 meter circles so going to the right she blows through my outside aids um especially at the canner so she really really falls out through her rib cage um going to the right but she does drop her inside shoulder going to the left but i find it more difficult on her left or on her right than her left um so it's just some stuff that we've been working through I've been really working on the walk to halt transitions. I worked her in side reins for basically the first week and a half, two weeks that she was here. I only have her for a month and I really can only do maybe two, three days a week tops because that's really all I've been coming out to do. Um, so I wish I could have her for longer, but, um, but you know, she's a pleasure. She's a pleasure to have. We've jumped twice since she's been here. She's been so, she ha she loves jumping. She's just, she's such a good mare. She's such a good girl. Um, but yeah, she's definitely got some stuff. Um, so I've at least gotten her to the point where she can leg yield now. Um, and she at least for the most part tries to listen to your left leg, but it's not solidified yet. So um, yeah, so. I am going to put her up and post her off, put her back out in the pasture, and then I'm going to go get Zeke and ride Zeke. And then if I have time and I feel up to riding 10, I'll ride 10. If not, then he'll get another day off. So.
couldn't decide what I wanted to do. So I decided with him having three days off, it would probably be best to just do some dressage stuff just because I have a feeling he's probably gonna be a little bit wild. Um, and then I just, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see how he feels when I get on because something was telling me maybe his feet weren't feeling good today. I don't know, just he was, he always kind of stands weird, but I don't know. Something was telling me that I should just flat today, so trust your gut, man. So with Zeke, I always start by letting him walk on a completely loose rein, um, just trying to get him to walk a little forward just to loosen up his back, loosen up his legs, his muscles. Um, kind of the same with Renita. Um, they're both 17, so they get a little stiff when you get them out. Um, you know, they can be just a little bit tight, so it's very important to let them stretch out and um, I do the same thing at the trot. So I try and just get them in front of my leg a little bit forward and um, just stretching down into the contact just to loosen up his back and get his hocks and stifles working, loosened up, warm. So while we're in the um, stretching, trying to get him to stretch in the trot, I do some leg yields um, just to get him off of my leg and just kind of exercises like that it's all about just getting him loosened up and getting him stretching and getting um you know, just getting him loose uh he's a big guy 18 hands he's massive and he just you know he's he's got a he's got a lot to carry around so a lot to get loosened up once I get them loosened up, I typically do some 10 meter circles and some shoulder ends and his, this is actually his harder side because he has to push off with that um, right hind, which if you've been following me, you know, is his weaker. It is definitely getting stronger. That's for sure. But anything kind of using that right hind leg is a little bit choppy. So his left lead canner and he just he has a hard time you know he's, he's a big guy so then i'll start cantering um and just try and get him in front of my leg getting him softened i'll flex him a little bit to the outside then straighten flex him a little bit to the right because he can tend to hang on the um i think the left the left rein so no, it's the right rein. Yeah, it's the right rein. Yep, that's right. Um, so he doesn't quite give to that half halt. So I try and just get him forward, push him into the bridle, get him a little bit loose, and um, just try and kind of shimmy that away so he's not grip gripping or taking a hold of the bit on one side or the other. Um, and it's just trying to get the, the rib cage loose too. So now we're on the left lead. His left lead has gotten so much stronger and the changes from the right to the left have gotten better. He's still late, but he's typically only one late behind where before I couldn't, I'd have to, for the most part, bring him back to the trot. But now he's definitely starting to get a little bit stronger. We've been working on a lot of the changes recently just to get them less exciting because he was kind of just throwing himself into them. So I've been working on a lot of that just so it's it's not like, you know, it's just another movement. It's not like something we should be nervous about or something we should be scared about. And um, Debbie had thought that 
he might have been chased into the change. Um, so just letting him know that, hey, you know, it's, it's, it's not so bad. You don't have to worry about it. But really, really happy with him. I find that I can get the change cleaner um, if I kind of almost do like a half pass mo half pass motion where you kind of push his haunches over. Um, if I do that, he tends to be a little bit more balanced with it. So this exercise I was doing with him um, was basically just doing a half pass to a change and a half pass to a change. So this worked out really, really well for him because I kind of had to have him backed off enough to where he didn't run into it. But he was also kind of thinking more because if I just try and do a change, he'll like run into it. So I think, yay. I think that was the first clean change from that direction that I've had on him. I don't know, but yeah, he's usually late one behind. And then going on this one, he ended up being late there and he's usually not late from the right to the left, but Either way. Anyway, so then I worked on a little bit of trot half pass. I've been doing a lot of half pass movements with him just to strengthen up those hind legs and um, get him equally strong because he's definitely a one sided horse. Um, oh, look at how cute he is. He's just so good. I'm so happy with him. I still have a long way to go in my position and everything, but. Um, He's just really good. He's he's a tough horse to ride, but um, I really enjoy enjoy having him, and he's he's taught me so much, and he will continue to do so until until it's time for him to retire, and then he'll have a great life somewhere with me, hopefully at my own place. But if not, then we'll find a retirement place. But he's definitely a hundred percent sound now, which is awesome. So I decided to throw this in here. Um, this was one of the last rides I had on him at Avalon before we moved. And this was the only footage left there that I had. So I just decided to throw it in here. So I wanted to jump in one last time here because he just has so much fun jumping. And I was so happy with how he did. Um, he just, you know, we just had a nice light ride. And as you can see, I did put him in the Hackamore bit because he can be a freight train over fences just like Renita does. But... The difference with him is he does not have he's kind of got a hard mouth so he just basically takes a hold of the bit and takes me and he can because he's probably 1800 pounds and his neck weighs probably more than I do so he can definitely use that against me and he does so he went really well in this bit, actually. Um, so if I jump him um, I'll probably jump in this but I don't really have any plans of showing him jumping um we'll take a lesson here or there i'll take him out to queenie and pop him over some cross-country fences but um you know i just really am not going to focus on anything showing with him other than dressage if the opportunity presents itself and we you know have the opportunity to go to a schooling show that's cheap i may take him but I don't have any intentions of showing him over fences anytime soon. Um, I was going to, but I kind of want to focus on him with dressage and Ten and Renito with eventing um, and show jumping. So I don't really have the extra funds to add him to the show list for jumping, but he's just got such a nice canner. He's so sweet. But as you can see, we're just we're just having a nice little ride. You know, we're not we're not doing anything stressful. We're just having fun and he likes it. You know, it's it's nice to have a day like that where we just kind of uh do nothing but just have fun. Um he is out of corrective shoeing now, which is so amazing. Um he is in just plain horseshoes. He has no wedges no nothing no corrections and he is totally sound so i got him in november and his angles were all off if you've been following for a while you know the struggles i've had with him and it has taken almost a full year 
So it's been 10 months uh, to get him to the point where he is not in any kind of corrective shoeing. So um, I'm really, really, really happy about that. And I'm so thrilled. And he's comfortable. I'm happy he's comfortable. But this video was still while he was in glue on shoes. And he was um, really long. So this was towards the end of his shoeing cycle. So I think he got shod pretty, pretty soon after this video was taken. So anyway, um, it's just we're just trotting in and letting him canter out. And he just has so much fun. Look at how good he is. We kind of run out of room in the lines because he's massive and he walks the lines. <laughs> Runs the lines, I should say. But he's just, I just love this horse so much. He's such a good boy. He's kind of a jerk sometimes, but when he's, a, when, when he's not being a turd under saddle, he's just, he's just so much fun. It's just going to take some time. You know, he's, he's older, um, just like Renita. They've been tossed around a lot so they're still I mean they're still learning me I'm still learning them I mean it doesn't happen overnight and it can take years for um the trust and um you know relationship to develop so I just I learn new things about him all the time and I just really am happy that I have him and he's such such a cool kid he loves jumping, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. I wanna be a weekend lover. Yeah, I'ma be the best damn lover you got. I wanna mess up your